When do Christians receive the Holy Spirit? Now, there are some that believe that you receive the Holy Spirit at the time that you profess your faith in Christ. And then after that, subsequently, there is a second filling. Well, the reason for this problem is found in John 20, 22. Up front, let me say there is no such thing as a second or subsequent filling of the Holy Spirit. Every believer has the Holy Spirit. We'll get to that in a second. But in this passage, the passage that causes some problems is John 20, 22. He has the apostles or the disciples there. And he says to them, when he had said this, he said, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. It says, and if you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Well, it seems as though Jesus has given them some power to do some things such as receive and to forgive sins. But there's a little bit more to the story. One, as he's telling them, one, to forgive sins, their sins have been forgiven. This is used. This is the perfect tense. Uh, same thing. Their sins have been retained. This is the perfect tense stating that they have already been forgiven or they have already been for, uh, retained. In other words, similar to what he says in Matthew 18, where he's telling them that Whatever you loose will have been loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will have been bound. He's just really declaring to them that they will have the ability to declare or pronounce what heaven has already declared. But going back to the greater point, when he breathes on them, does he is he actually giving them the Holy Spirit? Now, what we don't know because the Bible doesn't let us know is how much, how was the Spirit working in or upon them at that time during Jesus's earthly ministry? Was there any empowerment or was there any use of the Holy Spirit with them? The Bible simply doesn't say. We just know that they were with Jesus, which might show us the reason why there probably was not the Holy Spirit upon them and why they would stumble and fail. But there seemed to be some sort of power that at times had been granted to them. Like we saw in the Old Testament, we would see the Holy Spirit come upon men, not permanently, but but be, but be upon them in a temporary capacity so they could be used by the Lord to do a particular task. And that may have been the point or that may have been the issue with the disciples during that time. Now, something that we're going to note about this particular passage and why you could not say that this is them being baptized or receiving the Holy Spirit at this moment in time is because two of the apostles are not there. One, Thomas is not there. And so is it that they're receiving the Holy Spirit, but Thomas did not? Also, Matthias, who is not yet to have been chosen. Now, what do we make of this receive the Holy Spirit? Well, this could be a symbolic gesture stated by Jesus showing them what they are soon to receive, which is going to be the Holy Spirit. We do not believe they have the Holy Spirit at this moment because if we go over to Acts, Jesus meets the disciples and tells them, the apostles, and tells them in John, in Acts chapter, let's start in verse 4. He says, uh, gathering them together. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard from me. Now, what he's speaking of goes back from John 14, 15, and 16. We're going to review John 16 a little bit, but remember in John 15, he says that the Holy Spirit would come to them, and he would also bring remembrance and cause them to testify of Jesus. So Jesus is making this point that it's going to happen to them and what will be the result of that. And he says in verse five, John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so it would seem odd that Jesus is telling them that you're going to receive the Holy Spirit and be baptized in the Holy Spirit if they've already received the Holy Spirit. Now, there will be some that will say, well, those are two different issues, two different things. Receiving the Holy Spirit and being baptized are two different things. The problem is, though, according to Jesus, the Holy Spirit could not have been given to them at that point in time, because in John 16, Jesus tells them that unless he leaves, that the Holy Spirit could not come. In verse 7 of John 16, he says, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So in other words, Jesus is telling them, you will not have the Holy Spirit unless I go. Well, when he makes a statement in John 20, they have not received the Holy Spirit or Jesus, I should say, has not left yet. And so it looks as though from John 14 on, Jesus is preparing them for his death and then subsequently for ministry after he, remember, he tells them in John 14, 12, that you will do greater works than I do. Why? Because I go to the Father. 
or what happens when you go to the Father? Well, when he goes to the Father, the Holy Spirit comes upon man, specifically them, but also all of mankind who has placed their faith in Christ. And so the Holy Spirit could not have been given to them in John 20. And then Jesus turned around and said that you will receive the Holy Spirit, even as well as he's already saying that the Holy Spirit will not come until he leaves. Now, as far as we're concerned, we know that for us, every single believer, every person who has placed their faith in Christ will have the Holy Spirit, irrespective of how long they've been uh, they've been a believer, whatever they've gone through. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, he tells us that uh, verse 13, for by one spirit, we were all, all of us were baptized into one body. Remember, John says this, Jesus says this, that John baptized in water, but Jesus will baptize us in the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul's talking about. He says, all have been baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. And so all re refers to every single believer, those that are saved for 10 years, those that have been saved for 10 weeks, 10 months, uh, 10 hours, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. All means all. Every single person, every single believer has been baptized into the Holy Spirit. And so when do you receive the Holy Spirit? At the moment of faith. Once you place your faith in Christ, then it is Jesus, according to John the Baptist, as well as Jesus in Acts 1, 5, it is Jesus who then baptized us into the Holy Spirit. The identifying mark of every believer is the Holy Spirit. Every believer who has the Holy Spirit is a child of God. Everyone who does not have the Holy Spirit, they are not. This is what Paul says in Romans 8, 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As a matter of fact, if you go back a little bit further to verse 9, he makes the same a similar statement. He says that, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. And so if you don't have the Spirit, you're not saved. If you are saved, then you have the Spirit. So when does a person receive the Holy Spirit? At the very moment that the person becomes saved, becomes a believer, and that person is then also received a mark, a down payment by the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So you have the Holy Spirit put upon you, put in you to keep you. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. This is John referring to every believer speaking about the condition of the person. Uh, Paul tells us that the home, the, the temple of the believer uh, is the Holy Spirit. And so it's vitally important for every believer to understand that if you are in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're in Christ. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, it's not because you're waiting from some, for some uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit later. That comes immediately upon faith in Christ. Amen.